So cross linking is one of the major reason for failure of drug release during the stability study for the drug products where the gelatin has been used. So let us understand you know what is the gelatin, what are the reasons for cross linking and finally what are the types of cross linking and you know how one can come out of in case you observe the formation of cross linking. So my name is Bhaskar Nabde. I have around 20 years of experience into the pharmaceutical industry and today we are going to talk about the cross-linking and its effect on to the drug release. So let us begin with the presentation and the sureties. So these are the four important points that I am going to walk you through. So first understand what is the meaning of gelatin. So the gelatin is nothing but a uh, the protein and is derived from the animal based sources hmm? so the second important point is gelatin is water soluble so but the cross linking form of gelatin is not the water soluble and that is the reason why you are not able to get the drug release out of your dosage form but as such gelatin is a water soluble compound when it comes to the composition of gelatin there are many proteins present inside it and here I highlighted two important proteins arginine and lysine because these two proteins are reason for the formation of cross-linking. So what is the cross-linking? Let us begin our discussion on to the point number two now. And the first is the cross-linking is the formation of strong chemical linkages between gelatin chains. So there are two different kinds of cross-linking possible and that is going to be a discussion of part in the point number three. Cross-linking is depends on the number of chemical and environmental factors. So we'll also talk about the what are the chemicals which trigger the formation of cross-linking, what are the environmental conditions which also you know increase the uh, cross-linking formation. It is generally irreversible. So once it is formed, it is formed. You cannot reverse the cross-linking formation. And that is the reason it is very important to avoid the cross-linking in the first place. And in case if it is not avoidable, we will also talk about the way forward. The point number four is cross-linking makes gelatin insoluble. So this is the very critical point and that is why we are discussing this topic. It, be, it makes the gelatin insoluble. The point number five is it slows down a dissolution process because it is insoluble now and because of that the penetration of dissolution medium towards your the filled material is limited and that results into the poor drug release. It may impact in vivo performance also. So sometimes if the cross-linking is very high, the degree of cross-linking is very high, it also impacts in vivo means biologically. Gelatin, may, gelatin made out of fish skin has lower incidences of cross-linking. So this is a study in which it has been proved that in case if the source of gelatin is this fish skin, then the cross-linking is limited but as the gelatin uh, is you know source from the animal uh, source you may not able to actually understand the source of your gelatin so it is very difficult to predict the cross-linking formation the capsule manufacturing also can you know uh, induce the the primary factor for the formation of gelatin so what is the heat humidity or drying that you have uh, adopted during manufacturing of your uh, hard gelatin capsule cells or soft gelatin capsule cells that can also contribute on to the formation of cross-linking. The third important point is the, what are the types of cross-linking now and there are two different types. One is internal cross-linking and the second one is the external cross-linking. So internal cross-linking means intra-molecules. So gelatin molecules itself comes together and forms the cross-linking that is known as the inter-cross-linking. So here are three important points as per as internal cross-linking is concerned. And here is the a small 
a diagrammatic representation of the cross-linking formation. So gelatin itself undergoes a cross-linking reaction. So lysine is one of the protein and the arginine is another protein present into the gelatin itself. So lysine and the side chain amino group of the arginine get oxidized and form the aldehyde group compound. So this aldehyde group compound again it can react with the amino groups present into the arginine in the process of amino acetal reaction and then result into the formation of cross-linking. So this is the simplest way of understanding the chemical reaction of the cross-linking formation. The internal cross-linking occur with increased temperature and humidity. So in case if you are conducting a stability study, now this kind of cross-linking may be a prominent reason why your dissolution drug is or drug release is slower. The second type of cross-linking is called as the external cross-linking and the external cross-linking is possible due to presence of the chemicals such as and here are those examples of the chemicals which can lead to the formation of external cross-linking. The aldehyde group, the imines, saccharides, ketones, calcium carbonate, hydrogen peroxide, sulfonic acids, paratoline sulfonic acids, carbodiimides, benzene and terephthaloyl chloride. So these are the few functional groups which can also result into the formation of the cross linking. So I have a small uh, diagram. So you will probably understand very well how this is possible. I hope you must be able to see the screen now. So this is a two-step process. The formation of cross-linking by external source is a two-step process. And as per this process, the formaldehyde cross-linking of biomolecules occur in two steps. And according to this, the first is the formaldehyde reacts with a relatively stronger nucleophile most commonly a lysine amino group from a protein. Now this reaction forms a methylol intermediate that can lose water to yield a skip base or an imine. Now the second step is, in the second step the imine reacts with another nucleophile to generate a cross-linked product. So I hope you must have understood based on to this what is the exact cross-linking formation based on to the external sources. The presence of impurities in film material. So in case if the impurities like peroxide are present into your film material, for example, povidone is the excipient that you are using for your capsule filling. So this povidone may comes with the peroxide and in case if there is a peroxide available, you can end up getting the cross linking. Drug molecule having carbonyl functional groups also tend to form the cross-linking with the gelatin. So these are the two important sources why you will end up getting the cross-linking. Now what is the way forward in case if you start observing cross-linking maybe at the beginning of your product or during the shelf life storage during stability study. Now as per USP general chapter 711 you can conduct the two-tire dissolution analysis. So we know that the pepsin and pancreatin are present into our gastrointestinal tract and are recommended by the USP in the tire 2 method. Why? Because this enzyme digests the cross-linked gelatin and helps in drug release. So this is the enzymes now. The pepsin, papaya and pancreatin can be used. So in case if the dissolution medium pH is less than 4, then you can use the pepsin with the concentration equal to or less than 750-100,000 units per 1000 ml. In case if your dissolution pH is between 4 and 6.8, then papaya with the uh, concentration less than or, or equal to 550,000 units per 1000 ml is proposed in case if the pH is more than 6.8 the pH of dissolution medium is more than 6.8 then pancreatin of uh, concentration equal to or less than 2000 units per 1000 ml is proposed.
so this is the way one can easily come out of the situation wherein you found the formation of cross linking so the cross linking is the challenge especially during the conducting your dissolution of the stability sample so you conduct the dissolution of your stability samples with as such proposed media i mean without adding any enzyme and prove that there is a formation of cross linking there is a formation of pellicle and because of that your drug release is lower and then conduct the dissolution by adding now enzymes as proposed over here and then understand whether now your drug product meets the design specification so i hope you must have now understood what is the cross linking why it actually gets happened what are the types of cross linking what are the factors which brings the cross linking in and what is the way forward so thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of very useful and informative videos till then take care and bye bye see you soon